Good afternoon, guys. Uh, as Derek mentioned, my name is John Stona. I'm uh, based out here in Singapore. I've been here for around two years on the regional team, marketing team for AdWords. Prior to that, uh, I was in Mount as you mentioned, heading up marketing for Website Optimizer, uh, Google's landing page testing and optimization tool. A bunch of speakers today have, uh, have mentioned it. Vinny's mentioned it in his Amari Hotels, Prizo. Iris mentioned it, I believe, I believe as well. So now's the time where you guys get to uh, learn all about that. All right, so I see a bunch of familiar faces in the audience from last year, so good that you guys came back, good to see you guys. I do see a bunch of new faces. And so, just as a heads up, I am gonna ask for a little bit of audience participation. Nothing too extreme, so don't, don't, you know, don't be shy. So just raise your hand when asked, cool? All right, so we have 15 minutes to chat today. So what we're gonna cover is three things. We're gonna talk about why landing page testing is absolutely crucial for your business. We're gonna touch on how Google makes it easy, stress-free, for you or for anybody else to do landing page testing. And we're gonna go over some tips and best practices to get you guys started. So before we, we dive right into, into uh, landing page testing, I want us to imagine online, the online business as a very, very simple machine, very high level. Online business is essentially three gears working together one gear spins to drive traffic to your site. Another gear spins to convert that traffic to, to convert that traffic into customers, and a third spins to retain and grow uh, the customer base. Now, the reason I highlight this first gear isn't because it's more important. It's because we as marketers tend to spend a, dispropor a disproportionate amount of time really trying to optimize that first gear. But with any machine, if one gear is optimized, but the other two aren't optimized, that's an inefficient machine. If you spend all the time and money spinning the first gear at 100 miles per hour, the second gear and third gear are moving at five miles per hour, you're not performing to your full potential. And that's where landing page testing comes into play. So what that means, I chatted a bit about this last year, and I'm gonna really harp on this again is that every day we're, we're faced with some choices. There is the pre-click side, which is everything that you do to drive clicks to your site. This is SEM, this is SEO, and as marketers, we spend tons of time, tons of hours obsessing over CPC, CPA, CPM, CP, everything. It's like nonstop ad creative, and not enough time on the post-click side. What happens when people actually click your ad and get to your site? Now that approach is flawed for a couple of reasons. First reason, if you spend a bunch of time on pre-click, doing lots of SEM, you spend all your money on direct response and people get to your site, but when they get there, they don't do anything, they leave, all that money just goes up in smoke. You basically wasted your entire marketing budget on what? On absolutely nothing. It's like you're on a first date. You basically, you have a crush on someone, think she's cute, you do your, you spend your time and your money investing in good restaurants, buying some flowers, buying some chocolate. You might say, I'm gonna take her to no sign board, not the cheap, not the cheap one by Gaylon, but the nice one with some ambiance, right? You're trying to impress her. You generate all the interest. You guys are, day's going well, you're walking down the beach in Sentosa, you pass Resorts World, you're thinking, I'm gonna convert this girl. <laughs> this is what the story is, I'm gonna convert you. And so, everything's going well, you have her interest. And then right at the, right at the moment of, of conversion, she leans in, she stoops down, goes up for the kiss, and instead of converting her, instead of kissing her back, you freeze, your jaw, your jaw drops, and you pee your pants, <laughs> right? That, that's a bad experience. Every day you have, a, that's awkward for everybody, right? Every day you have a thousand, sometimes tens of thousands, hundreds of thousands of prospective first dates to your website. You can either make out with them, 
or you can pee your pants. <laughs> Don't pee your pants because it's a waste of money and it's awkward for everybody. So that's the problem when you spend all the time on pre-click and not post-click. The second problem is that it just, it just doesn't make logical sense because pre-click isn't where the low-hanging fruit are. When someone, you know, let's say searches on Google, they see your ad, they see your ad, so maybe, you know, zero to three seconds. The ad takes up 3% of their screen. They haven't shown any commitment whatsoever to your business. They've committed to their search. If they're looking for tennis shoes, they've committed to that search. They haven't committed to buying tennis shoes from you. Whereas someone who actually arrives at your landing page, you have 100% of their pixels, their entire screen, and you have a lot more time to convert them, and they've actually shown interest in your particular business. So why is it you spend all your time on the first step and not the second step when the second step is a low hanging fruit? The bottom line is pre-click and, pre and post-click work together. You can, it's not wise to separate one from the other, do them together, even for your AdWords accounts, landing page quality factors into your quality score. Having a good landing page is crucial as well for your app performance. So it's not rocket science. Landing page testing is crucial. So why is it that people haven't done it? The fact is, a couple of years ago, it was expensive. You had to be an expert. You probably, if you wanted to do it yourself, you had to know statistics, p-values, confidence, you know, all that blah, blah, blah. That was before Google launched Website Optimizer. Google launched a product, Website Optimizer, that, that, that lets you, for free, test different versions of your website to find out which one's going to convert, convert the best. You don't have to be an expert. You don't have to be a statistician. You don't have to be rich. You don't have to be a big business. This is a tool for anybody. And the way it works is that people hit your site. If you want to test different versions of your page, Let's say the first one talks about free shipping. You're not sure, actually, should my offer talk about my best seller instead? Should I talk about limited stock? You don't know what your visitors are going to respond to. You actually don't know which of these, of these versions of the page is going to convert the best. You might have some gut instinct, but the only people that really know are your visitors. So the way to be sure is to test these different versions figure out which one's going to perform the best. So with Website Optimizer, you can, serve these, you can serve these versions simultaneously and track conversions. So you can see that the bottom one actually performed the best. And the beautiful thing here is that you can actually define what a conversion is. A conversion in this case is a sale. For someone else, it might be a lead, it might be a purchase, it might be a download, video click. It might even be someone just spending a certain amount of time on your site. Website Optimizer gives you the flexibility to choose that goal and to optimize for it. So here's a very simple testing framework you can use to get started. First thing, you have to have a page to test. Fortunately for us, the analytics team has done a good job giving you guys some insight into where you can find pages to test. Now not every page is an ideal candidate. Some pages are better than others. So really look for pages with known content problems and also pages that get high traffic. It makes no sense optimizing your terms of use page because five people go there. You should instead try and optimize uh, landing pages, home pages, step one pages of the funnels. These are high traffic pages which usually have high bounce rates. A good place to find these in your top landing pages report in Google Analytics. This is something which I think Barbara mentioned previously. And so you can really identify high traffic pages with high bounce rates. Similarly, uh, Vinny talked about with, with Amari, funnel visualization report. This shows where people enter and where they're leaving. If 40,000 people enter your site, 30,000 people leave, there's a problem with that page. Next, get some ideas on what to test. Typical elements include headlines, images, calls to action. It's up to you. You know your site best. You know your audience. Pick some elements to test. If you need suggestions, the Google web, google.com slash website optimizer has a bunch of articles you can choose from to get, to get you started. Next, now that you have your page, you have your ideas, 
Now it's time to actually launch Website Optimizer. Google.com slash Website Optimizer, start testing now. And it's gonna ask you to choose between an A-B test and a multivariate. For now, if you're just starting out doing A-B tests, A-B basically lets you test one layout of a page versus another layout versus another layout. It's the simplest form of testing. So once you do that, Website Optimizer is going to give you some code to place on your different pages. It's really a copy and paste exercise, just like analytics. And once that's set up, you have your original page, you have your variation page, and you have the page that is your conversion goal. You can preview your test, and then you can start your experiment. Final step is reviewing your results. Like I said, you don't have to be a statistician to use this product. It's built for absolutely everybody. One of my favorite analogies is if you can read a traffic light, you can read a website opt optimized report. Good, green is good, yellow is bad, yellow is undecided, red is bad. If you cannot read a traffic light, landing page optimization is the last of your problems. Right? <laughs> but in this example, website optimizer shows you the original, and then it shows you how the different versions perform. So you can see these versions here are the winning versions, and you can see how the different other versions perform relative to the original. And then launch your next test. So let me just give you a couple of quick case studies. This is from uh, Anne Holland's website, whichtest1.com. So Anne Holland is the founder of Marketing Sherpa, and this site was sponsored by uh, Wider Funnel, which is one of our authorized consultants in Canada. And the New York Conservatory for Dramatic Arts wanted to test between two pages. This page and this page. For them, they wanted people to sign up for their course catalog. Now, if you look at these two pages, they're both very different. Some might say the first page has lots of merit. You know, they're appealing to an artistic audience. So there's an artistic girl screaming, lots of colors. You know, very simple design, not too much text. Whereas this page, shorter form, a bit more text, but maybe clearer call to action. So this is where the audience participation comes into play. Who here thinks this version performed best? Okay. So who thinks this one performed best? All right, so it's roughly 50-50. Now if you were 40-60, if you were in a boardroom deciding this, you'd be gridlocked. Because one, one, one of your colleagues would say, listen, I think this one should win. And another person says, no, I think this one should win. You can go back and forth, back and forth. Maybe there's a hippo there. Maybe you're, don't do animal testing. There's no hippo there. So maybe it's just, maybe it's just you know, equal, equal opportunity. The fact is, this one actually won, and you won't know until you test it. Some good things are that, you know, the clear call to action in shorter form. But the also thing to note is that there's still room for testing. When Avinash actually analyzed the site, one of the things he pointed out was that he thought that the top was actually a banner ad. He didn't realize it was a form to fill out. So always room to keep improving your site. Similarly with, uh, with YouTube, website optimizers is how Google optimizes. If you go to the AdWords homepage in Singapore right now, for example, you will see that we're doing a test with three different versions. We use this for Picasa, for Google Maps, YouTube, Gmail, you name it, we've used Website Optimizer to, to test it. So I'm not trying to uh, tell you something that we don't use. This is what we, this is what we use and, and trust. And so the YouTube team, they get lots of people clicking videos, but signups for them, they wanted to increase. They wanted to increase engagement with more signups. And so they wanted a test with a few different sections. They wanted to see if they switched up the signup link, if they put something in that white space, if they switched this section right here, could they get better results? And so what the YouTube team did is that they came up with a multiple different, different hypotheses and different content to test. So a couple different signup links, a couple different designs for the, the, the white space at the top. So white, yellow, red, different calls to action, uh, different designs again for the section in the bottom right, as well as some more different benefits. In total, this was 1,024 different combinations they tested. Now, again, imagine that you walk into a boardroom 
And your colleague says, listen guys, I have a thousand and twenty-four different ideas I need your opinion on. Like, A, that's not feasible, and B, there's not, there's never going to be consensus. The only opinion that does matter though is the opinion of your, of your users. And what users preferred was this red section at the top, sign up for a YouTube account, uh, the same sign up link as before, and then don't just watch and participate. And this led to 16% more sign ups on YouTube versus the original. Again, you would not get that, and you wouldn't know just based on that intuition. You have to test this. You cannot run an inefficient machine for your online business. So just to end with, with a few tips, it's been uh, pretty well said, beware of the hippo. One thing to remember is that your users, at the end of the day, pay your check. Your boss only signs it. Your user, you get paid based on success, not based on what your boss thinks. Next, evolve faster than the competition. In the top left-hand section, what landing page testing lets you do for free is it lets you have a leg up on your competition. Fortunately, or unfortunately, well fortunately for you guys, in Asia, testing hasn't become as mainstream as in North America and in Europe. So that's opportunity. That's opportunity for each of you in this room to outpace your competitors at no cost. If someone is outpacing you on the pre-click front, you can outpace them on the post-click front. Next up, make bold changes. Don't test you know, period versus comma. Someone is going to come to your site and they need to see a difference within five seconds. So make bold changes. Also, wait two weeks, two weeks for results. Just don't, don't get antsy. I have people calling me, you know, all frantic. Like, John, I launched a test. I don't see any results. What's going on? Like, how, long, how long is it running for? Like 50 minutes. Dude, you need to take, a, take a break. Like two, two weeks. We always wait two weeks for Google regardless of traffic. And, and also test overkill. Be simple. Start off with a simple A-B test. Test one or two pages. Don't try and overcomplicate things. Next up, be creative and have fun. I don't personally recommend this graphic, but uh, testing should not be boring. Testing should be creative, we're marketers, and we shouldn't just be crunching numbers all day. Let's have some fun. And also, iterate, iterate, iterate. Testing is not one-time occurrence. Let's say this is, your, this is your current conversion rate. Look at small, look at small improvements over time. 12% here. Another 9% there on another test. If you do another test, get 30%. Another test, get 90%. These incremental changes over time can lead to one big increase in your sales. And so just don't stop after the first, first attempt. You're not alone. There are lots of resources you can turn to. Google.com slash website optimizer has case studies, sign up tips, articles, you name it. Lots of resources, webinars. We do have authorized consultants that can help do your testing for you, although it is relatively straightforward. Uh, the Google.com, the website has a blog, excuse me. Lots of articles updated every two, three, two, three days. And also the website often has a user forum as well as well as some published books by some of our partners. So lastly, there really is no reason for you to hesitate. This is a free product. You're basically leaving money on the table if you don't do any testing. Just to reiterate, you, it's imperative that you think of your online business as a full functioning machine, and you need to make sure that all gears are working together and working productively. All right, so start google.com slash website optimizer. Thanks a lot. <laughs>